guys, welcome back to Red Dog Gaming, where today we are doing a mod spotlight for Crusader Kings 3 with Ice Age Kings. A mod still in alpha, of course, so do bear that in mind, but a really, really cool idea. I was originally thinking about putting that in the mod, the weird mod review series, but this is not a weird mod. This is actually a very, very nice, very good mod indeed. So I will not be putting it in the weird mods. But do go and take a look at those weird mods if you haven't already, guys. There are some very weird mods out there. But yes, Ice Age Kings Alpha. A fantastic, fantastic idea. Um, and basically, you're going to be playing CK3, but in the Ice Age. In the Ice Age. So there's an Ice Age coming. We'll go through the Steam page just so you get a bit of an idea of what you can expect. And then we'll jump into the gameplay so you can see what really happens. Uh, please note that this is an alpha version, so they do have a disclaimer there. It is an alpha version, so it's not even in beta yet, but from what I've seen, it works pretty well. The world is thrown into a sudden crisis as Europe and parts of Asia enter a new ice age. Every ruler north of Italy and Europe and the Himalayas in the east will see their realms collapse, while realms bordering the frozen wasteland like Italian, Iberian and Persian rulers will suffer large penalties to growth. So you, when you're migrating, which is something you can do in this game, um, you want to be looking to get away from these areas. But it's very hard to do so. Very hard to do so. So the features that it currently uh, currently has is realm migrations. Rulers can declare migration wars and leave behind their homelands. Uh, you need to be an independent ruler and take the start migration decision. This will shatter the realm, but you will keep your primary title. Army size is calculated based on size, buildings, and development of your realm. You can then declare war against rulers outside of the Ice Age zones, which is a great idea. So a lot of migration going on in this game, which would be the case if there was a real Ice Age in this time period. Spontaneous migration, simulated migrations based on under the hood population system will see migrations of refugees whose size and impact are determined by the development and makeup of their homeland. So much of the world will become very chaotic as new cultures and faiths are introduced to previously stable realms. So while you, even if you manage to get away from the Ice Age, or you start away from the Ice Age, you will still be getting large migrations into your land. So it's just chaos, really, which is great. Simulated decline of realms will see Europe and the steppes collapse. Within a decade, mostly ruins will remain. The new culture tradition, uh, Winter Kings, will allow some cultures to stay behind and not thrive, but at least survive until better times. Uh, and on top of that, there's a dynamic climate. Conditions will get better or worse over time so that new realms will have to be abandoned or wastelands may be recolonized. Every game is random. The Ice Age might end or proceed all the way to North Africa and Southern India. All counties undergoing Ice Age will have a county modifier that allows you to identify them. So that is brilliant. There's currently 1,157 current subscribers, so it's already garnered quite a little bit of popularity, which is excellent because it's an awesome idea. Really, really cool idea. Um, and as you can see, looking at this picture, that is what the world will look like eventually if you keep on playing all the way through these Ice Ages. So let's jump into the game, guys, and let's see what it really holds. So here we are in game guys and as you can see the Ice Age doesn't really start initially um, already. You have to wait for it to come. So whether you start in the 867, 1066 or whatever time you want to start, the Ice Age will only start coming once you have started into the game. And we're going to go jump in as Scotland as normally as we can get and we're going to see... Um, as the Ice Age progresses, we're obviously going to play on times five. I'm not really going to do anything else, but I'm just going to show you the... Oh, you can see that. Did you see that massive bit of ice there that came? So as you can see, the map is stunning right now with this ice everywhere. I love it. Ice everywhere. And all the wasteland is ice. Um, although we are in October, so normally it would be snowy-ish. But even over in the desert, you can see that there's ice. Um, ice everywhere. And as we play, the ice will begin to grow. As you just saw there, and become impassable terrain. Ah, I hope I don't die straight away. Murray's quite experienced. Time for treatment. It's too late for caution. Ah, oh, it's a miracle. I'm no longer ill. We'll just choose, uh, of course we'll choose blood. That's, uh, that's our realm. Uh, that is our dynasty. We have good blood. We have noble veins. 
But yes, let's uh, let's just get this going and let's see and watch as the ice. And then we're going to do a migration war and show you guys how to do that. And as you can see, these nations are starting to fall apart. If we look in at this province, it should have some pretty bad. Look at that. I say supply limit minus 90%. Construction time 100%. Building construction cost 100%. Holding taxes minus 95 And development growth, growth minus 95 If we look on us as well, we will have that everywhere too. And we have to go far south to find a place. That uh, doesn't have it. You can see bordering Ice Age here. 25% minus 25%. Plus 25. Plus 25. Holding taxes minus 25. Development growth minus 25. So even bordering down here is really bad. You have to go all the way down to North Africa. To find a place that doesn't count as bordering. Um, let's have a look at Persia. Where would it count as bordering? Because it did say Persia specifically in the old uh, map. Let's get low. Yeah, it's still bordering Ice Age. So, what about all the way down at the Straits of Hormuz? Yes, even down to the Straits of Hormuz. Uh, and then in India, let's see where we can go to not find. So, there it isn't counted as bordering. Neither is up here. What about the Himalayas? Surely the Himalayas up here will count as bordering. Okay, maybe not. Okay, maybe these ones just bordering it will count. But um, I'm assuming Uge up here... Corrigion improvements. It has the Ice Age, yes. So as you can see, anything north of the Himalayas, this line, guys, has that horrendous modifier. We've also got the horrendous modifier because we are quite far north. Um, on top of that, there is a, um, a cultural tradition that we can get. So established tradition. It's called Ice Age Kings. Here it is. The Winter Soldier Commander trait is more common. Which obviously movement speed and provinces affected by winter, uh, which is all the Ice Age provinces, um, is more common. Some commander traits and personality traits have extra winter bonuses. Gain a decision to rec recruit winter commanders. So that kind of makes, you know, reduces uh, the deficit from some of these uh, as possible. Um, but I don't believe there is other ones in other sections. I don't believe i think it's just in the realm um yes so it's just that so it shouldn't be yeah let's just have a look highland warriors yeah so it doesn't really affect how you grow the realm and all that sort of thing so you still screwed over for money development growth all that sort of thing so you still completely screwed over for that so um it only helps you in battle which you're not really going to want to stick around very long. And as you can see, Germany has already fallen apart. So has Scandinavia has completely fallen apart, as you can see. And ice pockets are starting to pop up everywhere. And look at France. Now France breaks. Um, not any over here yet, just yet. Ireland hasn't been affected by it yet. Um, Iceland. But Scandinavia has. And slowly, over time, these pockets of ice grow as you can see they're popping in everywhere um and slowly but surely they grow they'll be gone tomorrow yep um and the same over here and as you can see the border gore is real in this mod guys if you don't like border gore maybe <laughs> just be zoomed in the whole time drastic measures and he got it successful treatment so what we're going to show you now guys after we've shown you that the Ice Age grows, how it grows, and how these realms start to fall apart. <laughs> oh my god, look at this. So basically what's happened here is France has fallen apart, and then Aquitaine, which was another kingdom, has fallen apart. Or was it just a large duchy? You know, it was a huge, it was just a really large duchy, but that's fallen apart as well, and all the counts have become independent. But no one wants to stick around in the Ice Age, guys. That is one thing for certain. So... What we're going to do is you come to your decision. You set, press start migration. I am still on debug mode as it as it says. Um, but yeah, you see that the, um, the uh, development level in all your provinces just comes down. Which is obviously trash for you. But you're going to be leaving this place. So, we lost all the earldoms. And now you will see our total soldiers should go up by quite considerably. Unless it just goes up to 579 because we are trash. Because we are absolutely trash. 
I'm hoping that's not the case. <laughs> Maybe it does, just maybe because we're just so bad. But when I was uh, playing as France, we got 70,000 troops. Maybe Scotland is just that bad. Genuinely. Maybe Scotland is that bad. Surely Scotland is not that bad. Wait for another month to pass. Hmm. I think Scotland is just that bad, but normally you get a load of troops based on your development and everything. Um, but for Scotland, the development isn't very high. So you basically, you can raise all your troops, but you can declare war on pretty much anyone now. So if we wanted to go down to like Jolof, I mean, Scottish Jolof, okay. I mean, I'd love some Jolof rice, so let's go down here to Jolof. Quick in prison. No, I don't want debug interactions. Too far away to interact with. I guess we're too far to go and get uh, Jolof rice. But we can come down to, say, Galicia, declare war, and invade Galicia. So you can just do that to anyone that you're in diplomatic range with. We could have maybe done that to, uh, no, we can't do that to Byzantine. But now you can see 40,000 troops, guys. That's how you get your troops. 40,000 troops ready to go. Let's get them all together because they're going to be suffering a large amount of attrition because of the uh, winter, surely. Um, it's time to go to a new home. Because fuck staying around in the Ice Age, guys. Fuck staying around in the Ice Age. We go to the new home. And here we go. Marital recriminations. Uh, yeah, whatever. We have become the new dynasty head. But oh well. But as you can see, guys, Ice Age is slowly, slowly spreading. It takes a bit of time. So you want... As you can see, it does take a bit of time. Like you can see that these... It's not growing like wildfire. So, you have time to move. You don't need to move straight away like I've done. But it is always a good idea. Because... As I say, what you have up here is no longer good. 90% <laughs> supply limit. Reduction. Holding taxes minus 95 and minus 95. It's terrible. You also do get a load of money for um, leaving your homeland. Because basically, the idea is that you've levied everyone in your homeland to go and do a great migration somewhere else. A great migration. Um, on top of that, you know, you... You're taking all the money from your holdings, removing literally everything of worth to get away from the impending doom of the Ice Age that is coming, as you can see, guys. As you can see, it has started to spread a little bit more up here in Norway, um, and these kings were wanting to be, wanting to uh, run away as fast as they can, basically. So, we'll come down to Galicia and install the new Scottish kings of Galicia. We'll go on times five speed, guys. We don't need to worry about anything else. And as you can see, Mercia has come down here. Is Mercia at war with you as well? Yes, they are. Mercia is going for the invasion of Galicia. So we need to win this quick. We don't want any damn Mercians down here. We want we want good uh, Scottish people. Come on. Should split this army as well. Um, Mercia has done the right thing and, and evaded the uh, capital. So once once we've done that, we'll invade. We'll try and invade the capital. Get out, out to sea, my boys, away from the ice age. And as you can see, it's snowy down here as well. So it's snowy everywhere. Um, oh, is that the capital? I thought this was the capital. Oh well. Oh well. Well, we'll come down. We'll come back down, and hopefully we get there before Mercia, and that might put us to war with Mercia. But, I don't know why it splits it like that. That's a bit annoying, but oh well. But as you can see, by <laughs> this mod just puts all these northern kingdoms in chaos. Even Italy has decided to break itself apart. The Byzantines and Seljuks are staying relatively alright. But all this region is just falling to pieces as the Ice Age slowly, slowly spreads, as you can see. Very, very nice indeed. It's a very cool concept for a mod. 
And it's basically just like a survival of the fittest mod. Try and stick in there as much as possible. Can we split you or not? There we are. Yeah, we're attacking, so we might lose. But we can get our reinforcements in as soon as we can. Yeah, there we are. Oh, we're still taking a huge amount of damage. What's that from? Their advantage, 22. Yeah, they just have a much better general. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, pretty cool. I very much enjoy this concept. It is really cool. It's practically a chaos mod, isn't it? You know, it plunges the whole of the north into chaos. I mean, it makes horrendous border gore, but... Apart from that, that's okay. And you can see some of the kingdoms up here have also decided to break apart and run away. Um, so everyone's running south. So if you're a southern king as well, that means you're going to have to be fending off invasions with these big armies coming at you from all over the place. Which is, you know, interesting concept. Whether you can survive as a southern ruler is something that would be an awesome challenge to do. 69% now. Nice. Very nice indeed. 88. Come on. Ah, Mercia looks like they've taken everything else. We need to make sure we get there as quick as we can. Don't think we'll be able to take the city of Braga. Okay. Uh, they boat bombed us. So we should have a decent advantage. But they just have the troops. Ah, uh, even if we lose this, though, we'll still win with this second army that comes in. Nope, they're running away. Stop going after my troops! Leave them alone! Okay, here we are. Oh, no! Okay, so, looks like Mercia took it. But as you can see, Mercia now holds it. And Mercian culture is not going to fit in with them. They managed to convert a couple to Anglo-Saxon in the invasion. But everyone else is not Anglo-Saxon. So that's going to be fun for them to deal with. There's also the religious aspect. So although they are Catholic and uh, Mercia was Catholic. But say you were insular or Norse or Sartru still. You would be invading somewhere that is not that. So it just basically creates this huge amount of chaos everywhere. And as you can see, look, Scots in the middle there. I don't know how that's happened. Um, let's have a look a few, through a few more of the cultures. See Polish down here, so someone's trying to invade here. Danish, Swedish over here. So what's going on over here? Slavonia, and who are we at war with now? We're invading the Kingdom of Castile, apparently. I don't know how, but apparently we are. So apparently we're invading the Kingdom of Castile. But as you can see, Slavonia. They are at war with the War of Tyranny. I thought they'd be being invaded by um, someone. But look at this. Oh my days. That's a huge amount of wars. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, invasions happening everywhere. I wonder whether the Byzantines are getting invaded. Because they would always be a good Hungarian invasion. So Hungary wants it. They're already getting some Ice Age terrain. Uh, Byzantines are actually losing. So we might see a Byzantine Hungary in this campaign. Angria has got up there. And they don't look like they want to move. So that's another option. You can stick around in your Ice Age area and try and make it your home. But there's no guarantee that the Ice Age will not cover your whole land in ice. As you can see, although it's not spreading hugely fast down here, it's still spreading. There's still like these bits weren't filled in before, I don't believe. Um... So the Ice Age will come no matter what. And as it says in the Steam, it can come all the way to North Africa. So even if you are getting down here, I wonder whether you could start a migration as well. So I think you can probably migrate once and then again. And look, England has taken over Morocco. <laughs> Let's have a look at the cultures down here. Andalusian, Baranis. They did manage to get some Anglo-Saxon in there. Which is interesting. But yeah, it's just an absolute chaos mod. So if you manage to invade somewhere, you're still going to have to contend with huge realm instability. Um, because of the culture and religious differences that you're going to be facing. So it's really, really, really cool. I do like it indeed. I think that's enough to show you guys. I've shown you all the core concepts of the mod. And as it says in the um, Steam, um, Steam page, 
They are looking to add some more events and stuff to the mod as well. So more Ice Age related events, which would be awesome. Event trees, which would be really, really cool. Um, and that could that would help it out a lot to, to make the feeling even more so that you're in the Ice Age. To give you a bit more role playing element. But as you can see, it works pretty well just playing the game itself. <laughs> Everywhere is in chaos. As it would if there was a rapid Ice Age coming through Northern Europe. Um... Which is awesome. I think it's a really cool mod, guys. So do check it out. I'll put the link in the description down below. Also check out my weird mod reviews as well. Most, uh, All of them are CK3 at the minute. And there are some very weird mods in there. So do check those out as well. They're quite funny. Uh, but thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, as always. And I'll see you again on the next video.